White's Electronics has a long history of supporting the gold mining and prospecting community. So when we set out to design the Goldmaster 24K, we wanted to build something that the experienced prospectors could use, but also something that the inexperienced guys could use, somebody who maybe has never found a gold nugget before. Now basic specifications on the Goldmaster 24K, this is a VLF gold nugget detector. It operates at 48 kilohertz, uh, weighs about three and a half pounds with batteries, and those batteries will get you 20 to 40 hours of life depending on your gain settings, how much backlight you're using. So it's set up for you know about a week of runtime if you're going eight hour days. Whites will be offering two different models of the Goldmaster 24K right off the bat. The standard model comes with the detector, a six by 10 inch search coil, it comes with headphones and a nugget scoop. And then the export model comes with all that plus a six inch round concentric search coil plus a backpack so you can pack it all in there and get prospecting right away. Now let's dig into the interface and controls on the Goldmaster 24K. To do that, I'm gonna take this GoPro. That way you guys can see exactly what I'm seeing. All right, so like I said, the uh, user interface on the Goldmaster 24K is meant to support both beginner and advanced operation. And the way we did that is that each one of these buttons, except for the up and down arrows, has both a short tap and a longer press or hold function. So for example, power button turns the machine on. It also turns the backlight on or off. Um, now this lock button here, you can see the arrows kind of jumping up and down. That's because this is operating an XGB or the automatic ground balance setting. If you wanted to lock that setting, all you do is tap that. Lock icon comes up and now you're locked. If you wanted to update the ground balance while you're locked, you just tap the bullseye button or the pinpoint and that does a ground grab. You can see it flashes the phase of the ground on the display and you know the machine's grabbed whatever ground is under the coil so you can keep hunting. Um, I like the XGB in difficult ground just because it's proprietary, it works to cancel out kind of a wider variety of ground minerals, but if you're really, really hunt for those tiny specks of gold, uh, it's really smart to lock the ground balance and just update the ground balance manually often because that's gonna lock it into like a really small range of ground values. Okay, so that's the lock button. The tap locks it. Now if you hold that lock button, that gets you into ground scan mode. And what that does is it shows you the ground phase and the ground strength. If you're like me, after you've been out detecting for four or five hours in the sun, you wanna go play in the creek. And the cool thing about ground scan mode so you can actually use it to mark the pay streak in the creek channel or stream bed um, by finding the areas with the highest mineralization and you can mark it with like landscaper flags or just you know draw a line in the sand. That way you know where to go back through and process the material through either a sluice or a dry washer. When it doesn't see any mineralization, it goes down and it flashes and lets you know, hey, there's no ground under my coil right now. In this ground scan mode, you can adjust your ground offset by hitting the up or down arrows. I learned this on the GMT to get more sensitivity on nuggets or to lower the sensitivity to hot rocks depending on where they are related to your ground point. So you can see I've got a solid up arrow right now. It also tells you the number of offset. So right there I'm plus one, there I am zero which is perfect balance, there is minus one. When you set this ground offset, this is this is active whether you are automatic ground balance XGB or locked. So it'll actually track the ground, but be plus one or minus one or whatever you set it to. And I'm gonna get out of ground scan mode by hitting the crosshairs button. And you can see I'm back to the normal search screen. So that's this button right here. That's ground lock and hold gets you into ground scan. So I'm gonna get back out of there. I'm automatic ground balance. Next, we've got these up and down arrows. They normally adjust your sensitivity. As you can see from the ground offset, they also adjust your other settings, which we'll get to in a second. Now the gain settings on the Goldmaster 24K aren't linear uh, like other machines. They're actually, they have a curve to them and that's to give you more sensitivity from the mid to the upper range of the scale. So when you have the gain all the way down at like two, you can still pick up nuggets just fine. And that's to give you more flexibility in hot ground. Whereas other machines you might think, well, if I run below seven, losing a bunch of depth, you lose a little bit with the Goldmaster 24K, but not as much. Next button is this big guy in the middle, which is like a crosshairs or reticle. We showed that that's, that's a ground grab if you just tap it and it updates your ground phase, whether you're locked or tracking. 
And then it's also a non-motion pinpoint mode, which a lot of gold machines don't have. So I've got a nugget on the ground, I'll show you. Keep in mind, this is a gain setting of two right now, and I'm getting a good ID on it. So I'm gonna go in pinpoint mode. So the bars on the sides fill up as you go over the target, and then the numbers count down from 30 to zero. And that's not related to any depth, like inches or centimeters, because gold can be any different kind of size. So we just kind of picked a scale of numbers, and you really want to use the bars and the sound. The sound is the main thing. So that's that guy in the middle there. We also have this music note button here, which enables a tone ID. If you tap this button, that's tone ID. And if you tap it and that icon's not on the screen, that's your traditional zip zip VCO audio that a lot of gold machines have. Some people like tone ID, they might be used to a coin machine or they might have never prospected with a detector before. So that's gonna give you a high tone on all of your high conductors and a low tone on your low conductors. But be careful because in mineralized ground, sometimes gold can sound a lot like a low conductor because the, the strength of the ground actually pulls the phase of the target down. So we suggest dig it all but if you're in really trashy ground, you can put the tone ID on. It's also nice for beginners who are kind of confused by the VCO sound. Most prospectors hunt in VCO mode. That's with the icon off, which gives you a nice zip sound on your targets. So tap in that, that's tone ID. Now if you hold this, hold the music note button, you can see SA's on the screen. That's your VSAT. VSAT is variable self-adjusting threshold. And we've got three settings. We've got a low setting, a mid setting, and a high setting. You would use your VSAT when the ground is really bad or you got a lot of hot rocks. What it will do is kind of smooth out your threshold so that you're not getting so much ground noise. Uh, I highly recommend using this only when necessary. We tried to improve the ground balance enough on this machine where the VSAT was only necessary in like the worst conditions. So that's a music note button. Just review tone ID on, tone ID off, and you hold to adjust your SAT settings. Now the next button here is a discrimination button. This is a new feature shown by the nail that's crossed out. If you tap that, that enables discrimination. You can see I've got the discrimination icon on and I've got a blocked out target ID right here. If I hold this button, now I have fine control over the discrimination settings. This is really helpful if you're getting a lot of signals around like the one or two range, which tend to be hot rocks. You can knock those out and still keep your sensitivity to gold. And just be aware that when this icon's on, you're discriminating. And if you're going for maximum sensitivity, you wanna run open, no discrimination. The other thing you can do in the discrimination adjustment is hitting the lock button here. See how this segment's flashing up here? That's for, for uh, hot and cold rocks that wrap around from down here all the way up to your high range, which might come in as like a 95 to 99. You can knock those out. That way you've got both the really low target ID numbers, but also the high wraparound targets knocked out. So I've got a hot rock here to demonstrate how to use this discrimination feature to knock out hot and cold stones, which will drive you absolutely bonkers in some areas. So this is what it sounds like with no discrimination. And here's with discrimination on. And now I've got this piece of gold I'll put back down next to the hot rock and see if I can still get it. clear as day. So the last button to talk about is this speaker button, which you can see is right under the speaker icon on the display. If you tap this, that's adjusting your volume. And when you're normally searching, that's what this, this bar represents right here. This is your volume level. I've got mine on boost too. I highly recommend using the audio boost and then adjusting your sensitivity down as a first way to combat nasty ground or, or rough conditions, because that way you're letting the the gain of the instrument dictate the smoothness of your threshold and you're using the audio boost to boost up those signals that are just right on the edge of that threshold. So I want to show you the difference this boost makes at lower sensitivity levels. So I've got my volume, audio volume at five and I'm going to turn my overall sensitivity level down to two and I've got this little nugget here and we'll hear how it sounds. See it's, it's definitely distinct. but it's not loud. So you can hear the pitch change and the volume go up a little bit. Now if I enable the boost, this is boost too, so this is cranked all the way up. 
That's a face slapper right there. That's gonna pull you off your search, you're gonna dig, and hopefully you'll find that nice nugget. So tapping the speaker button adjusts your volume, and holding the speaker button gives you access to your threshold. This is a true all-metal threshold on the Goldmaster 24K, which is really crucial for gold hunting because a lot of the signals are very subtle. You, you can just hear them break your threshold. Depending on how much wind there is or if I'm using headphones or not, I'll set that threshold where I can just hear it in my ear. It's just buzzing. That way I know if there's a little variation in that threshold, I'm gonna hear it. Now to perform a frequency shift, you hold the discrimination button and you power the machine on. And you can see I've got F0 on there. That's the frequency I set earlier. And you've got F0 through F5. Uh, you can listen. There's nothing out here right now. It's really quiet, but you want to listen to each channel and pick the right channel that's the quietest. It gives you the smoothest operation. To save the setting, you power down, and now your frequency shifted. Powering down the machine saves your settings no matter what they are. So whether you do a frequency shift or you adjust your VSAT or your tone ID or your discrimination, Powering off saves that to the memory, so when it powers back up, you've got all your settings and you're ready to go. So if you do adjust things and you feel like the machine's out of whack, first thing you can do is perform a factory reset. To do that, the machine's off, you hold the down arrow and you power the machine on, and you see how it says FD for factory default. Now you just hold the crosshairs button, and you see when it goes back to the live search screen, all the factory presets are back and you can start hunting fresh. If you've done any detecting, you know the basics of how to operate a machine, but for those of you who've never prospected with a metal detector before, I'm just gonna go through the basics. So I got the machine on, I got it set up the way I want it. You wanna keep the coil nice and low to the ground. First thing you wanna do is you wanna get a ground bounce. With XGB on, all you gotta do is pump the coil a couple times over the ground. When your threshold calms down, you're ground balanced. And you wanna keep a nice, even, slow sweep and you're listening for like a change in the threshold. This is pretty mineralized and I can hear a little bit of ground noise. And if you swing the coil off the ground like that, you can hear how the ground balance went out. That's why you wanna keep it nice and flat against the ground. Cause it's, it's looking for the ground to get a balance point. As soon as you raise it up or push it into the ground off of where your normal swing is, it's gonna go out. So I'm just listening for a nice sharp sound like that. Now with most gold detectors, that's where you'd start your recovery process and you can get right to it. But because we've got a non-motion pinpoint mode, I'm actually gonna use it. And with the double D coil, you definitely wanna hit it from this angle and then also pivot around and hit it from this one. So you can get a really good idea exactly where that target is. So I'm pretty sure it's right around here. So you wanna set the machine down, make sure you don't have any metal on your hands, and you wanna use the scoop that comes in the box with your metal detector. So I'm gonna start taking material and running it over the coil until I get that sound. Now I'm gonna take the material and go 50-50. I take half the material out, it's still in the scoop, so I can dump that hand out. Do the same thing. Still in the scoop, can dump that hand out. And actually, I can see it right there. Now you wanna double check by running over the coil to see if it's gold. This is plaster gold, so it's nice and shiny. Um, a lot of the gold you find is rough, and it's gonna have dirt, and it's gonna not look like gold, so a lot of guys will put it in their mouth. Don't swallow it, because <laughs> it'll take you, a, you know, like a day to, to retrieve the nugget if you do swallow it. So those are the basics on White's new Goldmaster 24K. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is definitely consider getting the export pack, which comes with a six inch round concentric flat bottom coil, super hot on small gold. Uh, it's a great value for a little bit more money. You get this extra coil, plus you get a nice backpack to carry everything around in. And then the other thing that we didn't really talk about and I didn't need out here is a pick, a prospector's pick. A lot of our dealers who carry gold machines carry uh, nice sturdy picks. If you're gonna be out prospecting, it's a great investment and it makes the whole experience a lot more pleasurable. And then definitely get some kind of magnet for either the bottom or the blade because you're gonna come across iron. You're gonna come across tiny pieces of iron that fool the machine and having a nice magnet 
makes it to where after you dig, after you scrape, jam that magnet around in there, the signal goes away, look on your pick. It's likely a piece of iron. I got a couple pieces on there for my last outing, still on there. Um, but it just saves you a lot of time. Otherwise, you spend five, 10 minutes chasing it, and that's a couple less holes you can dig. We've tested the Goldmaster 24K all over the world. And we hope you guys have a lot of luck with this new machine. If you find something great, go to whiteselectronics.com or facebook.com slash whiteselectronics and share your finds. Till then, good luck and happy hunting.